Anita called me on my cell and she was crying. So I said, what's wrong? She said, turn on the news right now. So I did. There it was. I couldn't believe it. Just remembering everything that he did. Thinking about everything that he was still capable of doing. It's just so sad. George Powers was born in the city of San Francisco on November 14, 1963. His family owned a small independent theater in the heart of Mission Street. George practically grew up in that theater. Every weekend, I would beg him, come on, let's go outside, let's play with the gang. Nope, he's insisted on staying inside that theater, no matter what show was playing. He just, he loved it that much. From the early age of 10, George began writing and staging his own small plays, casting himself and his friends in the roles, and performing at the Powers Theater stage during off hours. We would do performances for our parents, and it was, you know, it was, it was kind of embarrassing, but, you know, George just made it so much fun to do. George continued following his playwriting dreams throughout his college career. He got a BA in theater and an MFA in playwriting, both from UCLA. It was during his time studying there that he met his future wife, Monica Booth, a theater major as well. George and Monica were the perfect couple. It seemed like they spent every minute of the day together. It was quite cute. After college, one of George's plays, Painful Persona, was bought and financed by the LA Theater Center. Actor Thomas Jameson was cast in the lead role. Painful Persona was a fun play to be a part of. George seemed really excited about it, which I think is why the LA Center was so quick to buy it. They saw something special in this kid, and they were right. Painful Persona was a surprise critical and financial hit. Critics praised the raw nature of the story about a couple whose apparently happy relationship turns out to be just a pose to mask their private life. It's a dark story, and it deals with the notion that the way people are perceived and the way they present themselves can be completely different from the truth. Painful Persona would go on to be adapted to a major motion picture with a screenplay written by George himself and using much of the play's original cast. The film was a big hit at the box office and it made George a household name. I honestly wasn't surprised that the Painful Persona movie was such a big hit. George's ideas for the most part translate very well into film, so it's only natural that these are going to be successes. What did surprise me was the relationship that formed between him and Anita. Anita Lopez was a film producer George met during production of the Painful Persona film. She went on to produce all of George's film adaptations. Anita Lopez was obviously very instrumental in George's film career. Not only did they have a good art and business rapport, but they were great friends in real life. I think it was Anita who suggested that he stick with film even after he got married and had a kid, which ultimately led to his masterpiece, Forget About It. Forget About It was a film written and directed by George that told the story of a young woman who, after witnessing a murder by her husband, has her memories tempered with by him using brain-altering chemicals. Forget About It was an unforgettable experience, no pun intended. I especially enjoyed George's attitude during. He was just so happy. It could be because he was, uh, you know, newly married and had a newborn baby, but the only other time I remember George being so happy was when he was drinking. <laughs> Forget About It would go on to win numerous awards and become one of the most critically acclaimed films of the decade. It seemed everything was going fantastic in George's life, but shortly thereafter, tragedy struck. On the morning of June 12, 2000, George's wife Monica was found dead in the couple's home right outside San Francisco. She had shot herself in the head. George and their daughter Nina, who was five at the time, were out of the city the night it happened. We were out of my dad's boat when we first got the news. I remember him not being himself afterwards. He was just 
devastated. It is with great sadness that I must confirm that my dear wife Monica was pronounced dead earlier today after taking her own life. I asked for privacy for me and my daughter during this horrible, horrible time. We don't need the press harassing us right now. Thank you. I was absolutely shocked when I heard what happened. Monica just didn't seem like the type of person who would do a thing like that. She was always so cheerful and enthusiastic. I guess it just goes to show you there's more than meets the eye. I did notice Monica became a bit more serious in the years after marrying George, but I just figured that was normal for any newly married couple. But I never thought she was capable of killing herself. George continued working after Monica's death, but much less frequently. He also began drinking more heavily. Shortly thereafter, Anita Lopez ceased their working relationship as well. George was always a drinker, but in the years after Monica died, he kind of went off the rails with it. He started drinking in excess, and he would say crazy things like he was a worthless human being, and he was responsible for Monica's death, and he just took it really hard on himself. I think this is what led Anita to breaking off their business relationship. He just wasn't the same person. Despite all his problems, George continued to produce work up until his death without the aid of Anita Lopez. At the time of his death, he was working on a script called The Confession, which unfortunately was left unfinished. George was a great talent. I don't think anyone can deny that. I don't think we'll see another talent like his again. He was a great sweet man, I can tell you that. A great person to work with and a great friend. That's how I'll always remember him. My dad, he was, he was, he was. I'm, I'm sorry. That's okay. Cut. Uh, okay, everyone, let's take a break. You want a second to relax, Nina? Yes, I need a moment. Yeah, sure, go ahead. You can go outside if you want. Nothing going on between us. It's just business. Bullshit! Monica, I'm sorry. You come home drunk as shit after fucking a whore and you're sorry? Do not call Anita a whore. I'm sorry you're fucking your business partner. I'm leaving you. Oh, no, you're not. Get your drunken hands off me. Let's, let's talk for a second. There's nothing to talk about. I want you out of here in the morning. George, what are you doing? <laughs> I need you here as soon as possible, all right? No, this is bad. This is really fucking bad. Yeah, of course I touched it. But you're sure, you're sure you can take care of this and make it look convincing? Yeah, I fucking hope so. No, I don't think anybody would have heard. We don't really have neighbors. I'm just worried about... Look, get here now, all right? I'll be right out. fun trip, remember? Well, I promised I'd take you on the boat, and you were sleeping, so I thought it was better not to wake you. Come on, you want to help me steer?
Hello? Yes, this is George. Wait, what? I'm sorry. That's okay. Uh, you ready to continue? Yeah. Okay, good. So when I say action, just tell me the best thing you can think about your dad, okay? Okay. All right, everyone, rolling and action. My dad, he was, he was just a really great guy.